Welcome to Taft TV, everybody. I'm Alex Bastjavansky. We're doing something a little different this week under very unfortunate side circumstances. Um, joined in the studio by CAF Director Phil Iannati on the end and uh, the General Manager of Branton City United, Sandy Dunslow. First of all, thanks for being here uh, under unfortunate circumstances, as mentioned. And we're going to explain what's going on exactly. Um, what happened was on uh, uh, July 10th, um, a young man playing for Branton City United uh, named Joshua Akinbule, um, uh suffered cardiac arrest on the field during the game, during a CAF game, and uh, he subsequently passed away on July 18th. Uh, obviously, obviously, everyone in CAF and uh, in the soccer community and is devastated by this, and uh, we're here to talk a little bit about it today and, you know, and, and uh, reminisce about his life for those who knew him a little bit and also talk about perhaps what players and teams can do and the future to help avoid circumstances like this. But again, thanks for being here, both of you. Um, Phil, just let's, let's start with you and talk about obviously what the CAF community and soccer community is feeling right now with this. Yeah, Alex, it was a, it was a tough day. Uh, I remember getting that phone call and, um, you know, the, one of our uh, conveners called saying there was an emergency on the field. You don't know how, how serious it is until you really understand the ambulance there and the environment and people uh, being frantic. And uh, it was a tough day. It was a tough day for not only uh, the, the players, the, the coaches, the spectators, everyone. No one anticipates going <coughs> to a game and seeing that. You know, um, very tough day, but um, you know, something where we hopefully one day will learn from this and in the future where we can help people. And mm -hmm. I think that's what we have to look at. And um, so much respect goes out to the organization of Raptor City United, uh, uh, how much they were committed to being part uh, of, of all the members there and, and, and supporting them. Families, it was just, it, it was a tough day uh, for all the people there to see what they saw, but the, the unification of everybody, um, it gave you that strength to push forward. We should point out that you're seeing on the bottom of the screen on um, the CAF website, um, as well as for donations. Now, the reason why this is is because um, Joshua was from Nigeria. That's correct. Yeah, and uh, Sandy's going to explain a little bit more about uh, his, his past to us in a moment, but from Nigeria. Um, and uh, there's been a fund started to help pay for funeral costs and as well to bring Joshua's, uh, some of Joshua's family, including his mother, here to Canada um, for the funeral. And there's obviously a great deal of expense involved, and that's why there's been a GoFundMe account set up. So if you go to CAFSoccer.com, anything can help. If you'd like to make a donation to help uh, pay for the funeral and the family expenses, um, you're the manager of the team. You were actually at, there that day um, when this was transpiring. Um, how is the team and the organization holding up? Teams holding up on a daily basis. We've had a lot of support from the CAF family as well as other organizations. The support has been overwhelming. The constant texts, phone calls, general inquiries asking what they can do to assist, how they can help us has been overwhelming. Uh, the guys are slowly taking time each day to process everything that's happened and the fact that unfortunately they've lost, lost a great teammate. Mm -hmm. And his, his background, this is a, a young player, by the way, just turned 29 years old a couple months before. Um, and he'd been in Canada for, for one year. He just was over a, a, year. a refugee. Um, and just give us a little bit of background about that and uh, his family back home. Joshua, as we stated, has just been here just over a year as a protected refugee. He's done some volunteer work with the refugee church as well. Um, he started with us back in June as a new player. He's definitely dedicated to the program, wanted to succeed and, and continue with his talent at a higher level. He continuously showed a dedication, was always at practice, always there, always had a smile on his face. He was determined to get a spot on our lineup with Coach Juan. He wanted to be out there, wanted to be part of the group and part of a, a great organization. Um, that day, the last game that Josh played, he was playing very well, probably one of his best games. Uh, Coach had continuously saw the improvements with, with Joshua. Mm. Uh, he was organized tactically. He was providing a lot of support in the back on the left wing, going sc with possible scoring opportunities. Um, and we're showing his yeah. pictures as well, you know, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, but what a smile. I mean, just, it's, oh, yeah. I mean, obviously this is just, on so many levels it's just heartbreaking, but he just looked like such a great guy. He was, even sitting on the bench. 
didn't matter if he wasn't st on the starting lineup. Yeah. He was sitting there and always had a smile on his face and the positive atmosphere around him. It just he make everyone have that smile on their face. He was just continuously positive. Um, we have to take a quick break. As we mentioned, calfsoccer.com, if you'd like to donate uh, to help pay for the funeral expenses. Uh, we're going to talk a lot more about this coming back in just a moment. More Calf TV coming up. Welcome back to CAF TV, Alex Vastivansky here in the Rogers studio. I'm still joined by uh, Phil Iannati, CAF director, and Sandy Dunslow, the general manager of the Brampton City United Soccer Club. And if you missed the first half, we're talking about um, a young player, a 29-year-old player uh, named Joshua Akinbule, who had cardiac arrest on the field in the game on July 10th and passed away on July 18th. And we're here today just to talk about him and his life and also um, other occurrences and things that clubs and players can possibly do to help not avoid because I mean there's things they can do that will point out if there could be some sort of a problem that's correct isn't it Phil to say there's a test that can be done for this yeah um, you know uh, someone close to me had his son uh, had uh, issues with his heart when he was younger and um, he went to the doctor and, and he pushed for this test called the echo and uh, when he when he had the test it showed uh, a hole in his heart so they went in and did the surgery on it Right, so it's important that we're proactive in everything that we do, especially with the young generation right now. Uh, sometimes you just don't know, right? And we have so much here in this country of, of Canada that we have the ability to try and see if we can get the echo done. Right, so anytime you have an issue, you feel an issue, or you, you sense something, be proactive. Go, go to your doctor, ask, get that done. This is the echo because, test. This is yes. ECHO. Uh, is there's the, two different ones. There's, okay. uh, I think one of them is called the ECG one, but okay. there's another one called the echo test. Okay. Um, uh, so that the the, e, the ECG is actually when they put things on your heart, right. they test the heart. The echo one is actually an ultrasound. Okay. So it's a, it's an ultrasound that, that goes throughout the heart to see anything uh, abnormalities mm -hmm. uh, throughout the heart, and that that's very important. And once you notify, because you can't really tell by certain things, but through that process through the echo you have the ability to do so and this is not an isolated incident as well it's, it's it's interesting when you start actually doing some research on this and you see a variety of different sports and a variety of different players quite a few this has happened to actually over the years uh, perhaps the most well-known in soccer recently being Fabrice Mwamba um, of Bolton Wanderers who suffered a heart attack on the field in an FA Cup game against Tottenham um, back in 2012 he actually was able to be revived and, and he survived. Um, but I mean, even in hockey, Rich Peverly in 2014 on the bench, um, Yuri Fisher of the Detroit Red, Red Wings happened as well. A couple this year in soccer as well that we've noticed, even just as recently as May, a couple of footballers that passed away. So this is something that is not, it's not an uncommon thing to have happen, is it? No, it's not. You know what then? Uh, many of these professional teams have certain tests that they do of course. to even go onto the field before. So um, it is, you're right, Alex, it's not. Uh, uh, something that people don't see every day it does happen. It's it's it uncommon, but it does it's happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and the key here is that you know one of the things that when um, we were together at the hospital, a doctor came in to send me and myself and 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 said in front of everyone, uh, this could happen anywhere. Um, happening on the soccer field actually gave Joshua the best chance of survival. This is something he did people, not know he had. Obviously, no, obviously no. not. Yeah. You know, and on the field, you know, um, so much. Um, you know, respect goes out to Juan Barreto, what he, Absolutely. you know, the support he gave that day. The, Juan uh, is the head you know, coach of Brampton City of Brampton United, City, of course, we should know, point out, yeah. And in between Sandy and Juan and the members there, they just gave that support and, and that's and that's a challenging day for them to see all that happen and it was just, it was going to happen, it was a day that happened on the soccer field um, and it's a sad day to lose someone that's part of our family. Um, you mentioned uh, before we got on, I was talking with Sandy, that Brampton City is going to take the step of actually retiring his number. Yes, the Joshua was wearing number three that will be retired with our open age group as well as our U12 team will be retired. And with respect with Joshua, when we step back on the field, we will also have memorial bands in honor of Joshua for right. every game that the Brampton City United steps on. It's City United has been just amazing throughout the entire thing. Uh, if you missed the first segment uh, on the bottom of the screen, you see uh, where you can go to donate and the reason why we're asking for donations is because um, the funeral expenses and also to bring uh, Joshua's mother from Nigeria to Canada 
uh, for the funeral. It's going to be very expensive and every dollar counts. So if you can't afford to give a dollar or two, please go to the CAF website. You'll see the link there for a GoFundMe.com page. Um, you know what, guys? Just we've got about a minute and a half left. Just you know, final thoughts. Obviously, this is a, obviously this is a, a tragic thing. You knew him better than than either one of us. Obviously, just you know, maybe some of your final thoughts on the kind of person that Joshua was. Joshua was caring, had a love for the game. Uh, no matter what, he was always there to support and work with his teammates. And he's definitely going to be a teammate that we're definitely going to miss on that bench, whether it be at our practice, whether it be on the field or sitting as a sub, is definitely, his absence is definitely going to be missed as he was truly loved by all his soccer family, which we've seen over the last week and a half. It's been and, a, and overwhelming. And I was going to say, um, really neat, obviously a lot of the players were there at the hospital visiting him and one of the players was on loan in Colombia and had his mother go to the hospital as his representative there. This is how much this player meant to everybody. Phil, just your final thoughts. We've got 30 seconds. Yeah, you know what? Um, uh, to all CAP members, um, you know, I thank you because this whole week is nonstop emails to the Sandy and the Brent United. Our program is about all of us, you know, supporting each other. Uh, and this is a tough time. And uh, again, thank you to all our members out there for your continued support towards Brenda City and the family. If you can support us as we we'll go forward with bringing the family over, it would be appreciated. Again, thank you very much. Um, guys, thank you for being under these difficult circumstances. Thank you so much. back to CAF TV. There were four games that took place on a hot sticky Sunday last week. All were in the under 16 group and we start off now with the best of the bunch. Pace FC has been like a whole different team after a slow start to the season. They were unbeaten in three as they took on powerful Future Academy from Ron Joyce Stadium in Hamilton. Game highlights now brought to you by Leica Sports. Leica, your passion, our commitment. As mentioned, Pace has looked good recently, but early on, Future dominated eight minutes in. Robert Kruger, 27 yards out, likely the goal of the week in Future, goes up one zip. Soon after, uh, they nearly make it two as Leonardo Roncarolo slides behind the defense just wide of the post, though. Golden chance for Pace in the 32nd minute. Handball called in the box right there. Uh, Daniel Frizzoni goes to the spot, but Anthony Guerreri, what a save that was to keep Future in the lead. And then just three minutes later, Aron Carollo with the sweet moves, watch this, whoops, slides past and goal. Future up to zip and fully in control, right? And you can never count this pace squad out. Second half, it was like they flicked the switch. Max Ferrari gets sprung here and he puts it home, pace goal. And they cut the lead in half to two to one, and they just keep on coming. 56th minute, Nihil Yates unmarked out front. Nice pace, persevering, all tied up 2-2, two -two. and they weren't done yet. Great ball movement here, but Anthony Guerreri once again comes up with another massive stop to preserve the tie. Future had his chances as well. Giordano, the Gasparis lays it off. Uh, for his teammate who ends up beating the keeper, but not that pesky goal post. And then just before full time, a mad scramble in the box here. The Gasparis gets two cracks at it. No dice though, and what a game this was. So Pace claws back from the two goal deficit to nab a point. Head coach Chris Speller, extremely happy with his team's effort on a hot day where they were undermanned. Yeah, it was, a, it was a really tough game for us. We only we didn't have any subs. Um, boys have been playing well just lately, but uh, we got off to a bit of a poor start and uh, we were under the gun, but they showed some resilience, came back, we got ourselves back in the game, tied it up. Uh, a point well earned by the boys. They worked really hard for it. It's a, it's a bit of a muggy day, so it was a bit, a bit warmer out here than most people think. Uh, yeah, it's been, been quite a good turnaround. Um, we put a few results together. We went to the Robbie, we did well there. Uh, the boys started believing in themselves. Uh, it was tough to start with, you know, we didn't know what we were getting into in the sense of the quality of the teams. And um, they're good teams. This is a good, good, solid group. Super groups, fantastic group. So um, we're happy. We're starting to put some results together. Uh, we just need a few more players just to make our bench a little deeper. <laughs> 
Well, Mississauga United has terrorized the under-16 supergroup so far this season. Along with Epic, they're one of two remaining undefeated teams. Not good news for ADP, who faced the Mississauga juggernaut last Sunday. Unfortunately for the boys in blue, this one was all Mississauga all the time. Just seven minutes in. Nice passing here. Uh, great stop by keeper Lex Hancocks, but Dante walks right there to clean up the garbage. And Missy goes up. One nothing. One minute later, then another big stop by Hancocks as he robs Dio Dano Mancini right there, and his strong play continues. Tenth minute walks in tight here, but uh, once again Hancocks off his line and he smothers the ball. Great goalkeeping. Uh, it was only a matter of time until United hit Pater though, and twelfth minute off the corner kick, Mancini sweet little one timer right there, and it's two nothing for Saga. Hancock's really prevented this game from being so much worse than it could have been. Huge stop off the Mancini one-timer right there. ADP, though, running into all kinds of trouble off the corner kicks. Jose Ibi puts it home. Mississauga up 3-0. Second half, United continued to dominate, but Hancock's continued to come up big. 43rd minute, once again, he victimizes Mancini. And do I sound like a broken record? 60th minute, Mancini versus Hancocks. Same result. Fantastic goalkeeping by the boy in 69th minute though, Jacob Carlos from 21 yards out. Hancocks was kicking himself, but after all the saves he'd made, he deserves a pass on that one. ADP get one back in the 71st minute. Josh Manier dropped in the box. ADP takes and make. And they cut the lead to five to one, but Mancini finally does get his revenge. 73rd minute. Oh, that is one of the best you'll see all week from 22 yards out. Perfection to one Mississauga. Then Dante walks, adds one more for United in the 77th minute as he turns on the Jets and puts it home. Mississauga, utterly dominant on the day. A 6-1 year final, and Mississauga remains one of only two unbeaten teams in the under-16 supergroup. Two-goal man Dante Walk stopped by after the game to share his thoughts. Uh, I think we played well after like the first 10 minutes because they were dominating us, but after a while we started to pick it up. Uh, me, I'm a striker, but today I have to play wing because we're missing players, and to score from a different position, position is amazing for me. Welcome back to CAF TV. Well, Chantilly forever suffered a shattering loss two weeks ago in one of the best games of the year so far. The boys from Hamilton went back and forth with Mississauga before cruelly succumbing to defeat on the last minute United goal. So they were chomping at the bit in their next game against Brampton Elite. So Brampton didn't have a win through five games heading into this one, but they stayed close the whole game. Early on though, it looked like Chantilly might stroll through. Israel Perrin on the break. Eh, off the goal post though. Golden chance for Brampton here. Christian Coletta. All kinds of time, all kinds of space, but just can't convert though. And then uh, moments later, it's Coletta again on the break. Great stop though once again by Carson at Provenzano. The second half now and Elite, eh, you know, they should have had a better result in this game. Provenzano again robs a great chance. Brampton had so many chances. And then Provenzano gets caught in no man's land and he takes out Coletta. Uh, nothing ended up coming of the free kick though. Late in the contest, Elite has a defensive breakdown right there. Perrin just strolls right in and uh, feeds Alex Elk. What a great win for Chantilly, but killer for Elite. That's deflating so close to at least notching their first point of the season. But in the end, they just couldn't close it out. Chantilly, meanwhile, picks up its third win in six games this year. Well, after seeing Mississauga United roll to victory earlier in the day, Epic knew they needed the W to keep pace with them at the top of the standings. Their opposition, Dragon Force, couldn't care less about Epic's big plans, though, and they gave them all they could handle on Sunday. DFC aren't far off the pace themselves. They hadn't lost either heading into this one, and they look good early on. Epic with the defensive miscommunication here. Arjun Mystery takes full advantage and slides in for the nice score. A one-zip 
for DFC. They were pumped and they had the great cheering section out too with the drum line going. Excellent DFC fans. Uh, Epic's Ronaldo Marshall, one on three here. Everyone completely ignores Tillon Martins out front, but Alessandro Procaccini gets down to make the good save. And this is why they were marking Marshall so closely because in the blink of an eye, he could burn you. Epic, tie it up and it's 1-1. In the second half, they continue to press, uh, breaking in here, but uh, ultimately the shot gets blasted just over top of the crossbar. Uh, Epic's persistence pays off though. Michael Washington in the box here, and he gets chopped down by Mateus Forte, which means, of course, that Epic throw their top gun on the spot, and as usual, Marshall is clinical. So Epic survive a scare from the boys from Bradford and managed to come away with the 2-1 victory. So Epic and Mississauga now are the two remaining undefeated teams in the under 16 group. They're scheduled to face off on September 17th. The buildup to that game is going to be insane. Okay, so let's take a look at the league table and we start off with the under 14 group. Uh, Epic on top tied with ADP, both with 16 points. London Elite with eight, uh, Bree six, Elite soccer academy three toronto international three chantilly yet to grab a point under 16 group as we just saw united uh undefeated along with epic epic has played one last game though uh, chantilly has nine points pace five all the way down to uh, brampton elite on the bottom yet to garner a single point in the open group croatia leads epic narrowly followed by supernova a uh, brampton city a uh, burlington and toronto atomic are now tied on the bottom with three points apiece. And just before we go, let's take a look at the calf countdown, the top five plays of the last week. Number five, we could have picked any one of about six saves from ADP's Lex Hancocks in this game, but this one against Mississauga, that's the one we're going with. Stellar goalkeeping. Number four, DFC's Arjun Mystery against Epic. Beautiful little fake, and then the sweet finish to put the Dragons up one zip and get the drum line going from the DFC fans. Number three, future keeper Anthony Guerreri had a monster game and here he makes the monster save off the penalty kick against Pace. Uh, number two, Mississauga's Giordano Mancini from 22 yards out, absolutely gorgeous. Perfect placement and uh, part of United's big win on Sunday. Number one, Robert Kruger of future, dipping, diving and dancing through Pace, 27 yards out. That's an absolute stunner. Beautiful goal. And that is our calf play of the week. And that's going to do it for this week. Once again, on behalf of everyone associated with calf, our heartfelt condolences go out to the family of Joshua Akinbule. And if you'd like to send a donation to help with funeral costs and to bring Joshua's mother out from Nigeria, please visit the calf website at calfsoccer.com to find out how you can help. Every dollar counts. Thank you so much for watching, folks, and we'll see you next week.